All right, it is time to talk soccer and Team USA at the World Cup. To do that, we bring in professional soccer commentator Mark Serber and a man who knows more about anybody I know with soccer. Mark, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. All right, Team USA eliminated from the World Cup in the group of 16 stage. What kind of run was this for Team USA? It it was a run of mixed emotions. Uh, for one, if you had asked any soccer pundit within the U.S. or any soccer fan uh, four years ago when the U.S. wasn't even in the tournament, if you were to go to the 2022 World Cup and you were going to not only get a draw with England, who were the semifinalists in the last World Cup, but you were going to be upset about it because you felt like they should have won and then go on and have the same feeling about a game with the Netherlands in the round of 16 – I would have thought that you were, you know, pulling my leg, but this is where we found ourselves four years later. We were really good in the first three parts of the field, all the way into about around the box and then had some trouble creating goals, but we went toe to toe with every single team that we played against. And so there's a lot of feeling of this was great progress and we're really excited about the future four years from now with this really young team that will all be in their prime playing at a World Cup in the U.S., Canada and Mexico. But at the same time, there's also feelings of what might have been. We really think we could have made a run that lasted longer than just to the round of 16. Is there a little bit of emptiness being how the game against Wales ended? A lot of people... Again, the pressure they put on England uh, the entire game. I feel like there there is some emptiness there with, with feelings for you, diehard USA soccer fans. Yeah, it's really hard. I mean, if you go back and think about it, we were a uh, Walker Zimmerman challenge away from beating Wales. And then if we had the same results, we would have topped the group and we would have played Senegal instead of playing the Netherlands. But at the same time, that, that doesn't really mean anything. We could have had just as tough of a game against Senegal, who's been excellent in this tournament. Um, so, yeah, I think there's there's a bit of feeling of emptiness because, first of all, I, uh, and you're going to hear this from a, a lot of different pundits, I think a lot of people felt didn't really understand the tactics that were employed by uh, head coach Greg Berhalter and also didn't understand the substitution patterns and the players that he put in. So there's going to be a ton of debate about that um, over the next month and continuing over the next four years. So. There's a feeling of emptiness. There's a feeling of could have, would have, should have. But again, there's that feeling of positivity as well. I think a lot of soccer fans, once they get over the raw emotion of losing this game and feeling that we could have made a deeper run, will look to the future and be really bullish on our chances. When you talk about building for that World Cup that's being hosted in North America, obviously the United States is doing the majority of that hosting. So the, the atmospheres are going to be charged. What has to change between now and then? Obviously, it's been a total revamp to get to where we are right now after the disappointment in the last cycle. Is it is it the systematic changes and the tactics or is it a focus more on the back line? Because I've seen some people saying the back line was kind of a weakness for this USA team. Yeah. The back line was definitely one thing. Um, also in the in the game against uh, Holland, their their coach uh, won the chess match. Um, Louis van Hall was was excellent with his tactics. They were stellar. They worked to perfection. Um, totally outclassed Greg Berhalter in this one. Um, and so I think it's it's definitely a bit of tactics. It's about it's it's hard to tell about four years from now because you don't know which players be injured and and which players. Will, will be in the best form. Um, but at the same time, I think as long as this core group continues to grow and develop and they are still playing at the level that they are at four years from now, and in fact, enhance their level to a world-class, uh, you know, stepping up from this great potential to being truly world-class where most of them already play for world-class teams in Europe. Um, but yeah, like you said, the defense is definitely an issue. I think we need to bring in some more um, more world-class center backs that will help because Tim Ream you know, played this World Cup 35 and he was stellar, but will he be the same at 39? Uh, who would partner him was a big thing. Um, and so that, and then also I the one thing we were really missing in this tournament was a true, as they would say, number nine, a true center forward who could score goals, who can get in there and finish off moves. And that was one thing we were missing in this tournament as well. 
But over the next four years, I think it's not only about bringing up this core group, but continuing to develop younger players, continuing to bring more players into the national team pool and see which of those players can come in and enhance this core group that we already have. So development, bringing players through and just having each player continue to get better, finding a true center back pairing and finding a, a few forwards that are scoring goals by the boatloads when the next tournament rolls around are going to be the biggest things. Mark, this World Cup has a different spot on the calendar, and I feel the enthusiasm just really isn't there, at least from the American fan base. Is that kind of an injustice to a USA soccer program going forward? I think the world, the support for the U.S. and the World Cup was excellent, but from a just from a traditionalist point of view, um, I think it, it's like I, I I love college basketball, right? but I don't get to watch it all the time. But when March Madness comes around, you better believe that I'm doing everything I can to get Thursday and Friday off of that first weekend. I think it should be a national holiday. But it's it's like, imagine if NCAA said, okay, guys, this year we're having March Madness in September. And so all of a sudden it's like, will this really feel like mm -hmm. like March Madness if we're having it in September? Uh, I think the fan support has been great, but I think it's been a bit of a weird World Cup. And I think that it hurt the U.S. players and it, it's actually hurting every single player in this tournament because 95 percent of them play on a club team in a league where it's a winter based schedule. And so therefore, usually you have a month to prepare for the World Cup. These players are coming in in the middle of their club season. They had like 10 days to get ready with their teams. And after this, they're only going to have like five, six days to recover. And then they have to go right back into their club season. So I think it's very weird for fans. It doesn't feel exactly right the way it would feel if you were to watch March Madness in September when the players were at a different part of the season. And I think that it just everything about it is is a bit it's it's a bit new and and a little weird but i think that the the u.s fans some of them might have been thrown off by it but i think it just it's everybody's just thrown off by it a little to be honest who is the most impressive uh player in your mind for team usa obviously tyler adams getting a lot of hype christian Pulisic, he's our local guy here he gets a lot of hype especially for his goal in the, in the group stage that pushed the usa a throw who, who was the guy for the u.s in this cycle you said it, uh, Tyler Adams was incredible. He was all over. He was making great tackles. He was helping back for defenders when they were out of position. And he was an incredible leader for this team. Uh, so I would say that Tyler Adams is the first player that comes to mind. But Weston McKinney was also tremendous in the center of midfield, um, filling in those spaces and helping to, to lead the attack. And then one more player is just Tim Ream was unbelievable. The 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 Dutch tactics are are what broke down the U.S. defense. Um, but as a center back, he hardly put a foot wrong in this tournament. And at 35, uh, he was the only reason that the U.S. average was the second youngest team and not the first in this World Cup. But he played impeccably at the back and and barely made any mistakes. And that's why the U.S. went through the group stage only conceding uh, one goal, and that was from a penalty. Well, Mark, awesome talking soccer with you. Enjoy the rest of the World Cup. Who do you like to bring home the trophy? It's so tough because there's a lot of mouthwatering uh, potential matches through the uh, round of 16, quarterfinals, all the way through to the final. I just have a feeling that if Neymar can be healthy for Brazil, this could be their year. But at the same time, the script is written for Lionel Messi. So I think that those two teams are on track to meet in the semifinals. Whoever wins that one, I believe we'll win this tournament, but I'm going to go with Brazil.